go. All right. Hi, guys. Andy Kennedy here. Uh, most of you know me. I am um, in eastern Tennessee, which is new for us, relatively. We moved here about um, a year and a half ago now and uh, purchased a 40-acre farm and are slowly still building our home. We live in a yurt, so that is what is here behind me. Um, so I'll just continue to chat as I um, let my internet catch up. It looks like it's a little unstable. So that would that would be another reason to record um, so that we get a clean recording. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, um, I have been a longtime member, nine year member of our healthy living community. And um, so a lot of the people who will be on today are in that community. I may ask you guys to, to chime into the chat, but as we're welcoming guests, um, please in the chat, put where you're tuning in from and who invited you. Um, and I'll, I'll ask you to be active in the chat. Um, and if you're watching this recording, you can put that in the comments of the recording as well. Would love to see where you're tuning in from and who invited you. Um, this will be right about 30 minutes. I'm going to get rolling here pretty quick and um, we'll, we'll keep it mindful of everybody's time. So um, we'll be right at 30 minutes. And um, as I've said a couple of times, but for everyone that's just coming in, two things. Um, if you can't unmute yourself, that's my fault because I wanted a clean recording in the Facebook group. Um, so put your questions in the chat. And then as you'll see, people are tuning in. Um, they're putting in the into the chat where they're tuning in from and um, who invited them. So um, feel free to, to drop a name. So I'm glad that I see some people, uh, mutual friends invited you, Mary. I see Tala's name there. Thank you. Um, and Sophie, you might have seen it in that one or in the Eastern Tennessee Homesteading Group. I don't know if I promoted it in the, the Farm Free Group, but I'm glad you're in there too. That's pretty cool. Um, so um, let's see, making sure you use the chat. So if I've said that already, I know you've heard that multiple times, but use the chat today for questions. I'll either answer them here or I'll answer them in the Facebook group. And I'll put the link to the Facebook group in at the end here. Um, I will actually, I'll put it in now too. Um, and then that way, if um, for some reason I lose the copy paste by the end of this, we can just repost it. So um, thank you guys all for coming. I'm really excited to share, um, to just share this experience with you. It's been a really fun experiment for me to continue to, um, to develop. And it's been a five-year journey for the gluten-free sourdough for me. But also uh, with gluten-free, it's been about, um, I think, 15 years now that I've been gluten-free. So um, still letting people in. Welcome, guys. I, I see you, Diana and Darla and Lisa. Welcome. I'm glad you guys are all here. If you can't unmute, I'm going to keep repeating myself in the beginning here. If you can't unmute yourself, it's my fault. We want a clean recording in um, both in the Facebook group and on um, on YouTube for us. So in the chat, please put where you're from and who invited you. So we've got a good record of that. And then if you are a partner with our healthy living community, um, please put JP in the chat. So I know how many of you are already partners with our health, healthy uh, living community, whole food concentrate community. Um, and I'll briefly tell my story really quick with that and what this Live With Vitality collective that I'm wearing is. Um, that's okay, Lori, I'll keep, I'm, I see them. So I have participants up, so I'll keep, I'll keep letting them in. Um, so if you're just coming in, put in the chat where you're tuning in from and who invited you. And then if you are a partner with our Whole Food Company, please put JP in the chat. If you don't know what that means, um, reach back out to the person that invited you. But my story really quick um, is that I was struggling with my health. I was gluten-free at this point, uh, dairy-free. I had cut out so many different things. I can't even list them all. Um, and uh, I had symptoms that ranged from brain fog to uh, really, really irritable gut, not, not really getting along with anything that I put in it anymore. Um, and a friend of mine told me about whole food concentrates and I decided, okay, I'm going to add that in. Um, she, my dear friend, Lori dripped on me for a very long time. I didn't quite get it at first because, um, stubborn like that. 
Um, and I was very strict on my diet. I will say that um, that's where this whole gluten-free thing came from. I was very, very strict because I had to be. Um, and when I learned that I could just fix my gut with a couple of small things, um, I was so happy. So um, the, fast forward, I'm not on any medications or other supplements or um, all of the many things that I was taking. I can eat most of the food that I couldn't eat before, including a little bit of gluten here and there. Um, but honestly, I try to still stay very gluten-free because it does still trigger me. Um, and, uh, gluten-free is part of our 10 day reset. Um, it, we do this every month as a healthy living community together. And, um, that 10 days during that 10 day period, we cut out gluten in addition to cutting out dairy and caffeine and alcohol and sugar. Um, and so if you are, listening along and participating in the chat. If one of those things, uh, well, first of all, if you've done one of our 10 day healthy resets before, um, type 10 in the chat so I can see how many people have done that before. And then if you have done that before, um, nice, here they start coming in, Mary, Diana, nice. Type 10 in the chat if you've done our 10 day reset. And um, if you have, what was the hardest thing for you to give up? Um, for me, um, that was caffeine. And sometimes that trickles back into my life. It's still a hard thing for me to give up. Um, those five things that we give up during that 10 day um, reset are caffeine, sugar, alcohol, gluten, and dairy. And then we add things in too. We add a mindfulness practice. We add moving every day. We add our whole food concentrates, both macro and micronutrition. Um, we add focusing on sleep and drinking a lot of water. So cutting five things out and adding five things in. And we just started that for our monthly today. I see, yeah, I see another person with coffee being a hard thing to cut out. Uh, dairy, yeah, that too. And your ice cream habit that we just heard about about an hour ago, Lori. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got one of those too sometimes. Uh, not really with the ice cream anymore, but um, let me tell you the weight I gained when I went to Italy and ate gelato like it was going out of style. Um, so now I'm just going to kind of really quickly talk about why gluten-free sourdough. So thanks for putting all of that in the chat, guys. Um, so first, let me back up and say in 2018, a friend of mine and our whole food company said, you know, um, sourdough gluten is not the same. You can eat sourdough um, if you're gluten-free um, because it won't bother you. And I said, I don't know if I believe that, but I'll try it because I was, I really missed baking, um, really missed, you know, bread and all of that stuff. And I had been off of that stuff for a long time. So um, I said, okay, I'll try it. And I took, took home her very ancient from Ireland, I think even like mother um, and uh, fed it with King Arthur flour, which is what she said I had to do, which the flour she said I had to use, I mean. Um, and then sure enough, I'm, I was so excited. It was bubbling, was doing all the right things. I followed her instructions to the T, you know, letting it rise, all that good stuff. And, um, I'm so sensitive and aware that I, I can pretty much touch something and know if it's going to trigger me. And so I put my hand on that hot loaf of bread when it came out and I was like, oh no, like this is not going to agree with my body. I knew it. I took a bite of it anyway. And, um, yeah, no, just Im immediate, like bummer. So I called up Lori and I said, you need to come get this out of my house. I'm going to eat this whole thing. It smells amazing. Um, and she came and picked it up and gave it to her husband and son. because She doesn't eat gluten either. Um, so at least it went to a good home. Um, and I started my quest immediately after that, because I thought this has to, someone has to have done this. And what's funny is I hadn't searched gluten-free sourdough until this afternoon. This was 2018 that I had developed this recipe. Um, and I should have known that five years later, there's a lot more out there, which is great. When I was searching, there was nothing out there. Um, well, I shouldn't say nothing, but I definitely had to search high and low and I did months of research. Um, so another little game, let's play type one in the chat if you've baked sourdough bed, bread. Um, and then type three in the chat if you've baked gluten-free sourdough bread. And I'll see probably not very many threes there, um, although I'll be excited to see. And that's gluten-free sourdough, not just gluten-free, because I'm sure a lot of you have baked gluten-free. Um, you know, gluten, it's the things that I say, you know, about bread, right? It's sticky. 
right? You spill flour on the counter. It's hard to get up. It's sticky. It's tacky. It's doing that in your system. Um, and you know, it's, it rises, right? The yeast and, and, and all of the other ingredients that go into making bread, you know, uh, expand. So that expands in you as well. So your gluten-free sourdough bread is not going to expand, um, as much as your regular sourdough is, it's also not going to stick to you and it's, it's not going to, um, to cause inflammation. Um, so the other piece that they say about sourdough in general is that that fermentation process, you know, um, makes the nutrients more bioavailable. Um, it, it, it eats up that gluten, like I said, so that if you're gluten intolerant, you can have it. I found that I could not have it. So I find that that's not true. And fermentation is not with sourdough. It's not the same as like sauerkraut, right? You want to be eating some of those really good fermented foods on a regular basis to help your gut. Um, sourdough, I, I feel for me, at least the jury's still out on that, um, on it, you know, really repairing your gut microbiota. It's not the same as sauerkraut in that, in that camp. Right. So, um, so fast forward, um, I did a bunch of research. If you haven't seen the blog post, um, I put that in the workbook. So you can download the workbook on both the Facebook event and the Facebook uh, group. There's two links there. The event is something you can share. The group is something that you can invite to. Um, and that's where all the recordings will be housed. Um, and um, the blog post that I have, I definitely, if you're into information, there's, as I am, so many so many resources in there. Um, I think it's like 15 different links that you can look and see other recipes or tweak it. So as we talk throughout the week, I'll refer to it a couple of times because that's kind of my my primary resource bank right now is that blog post. Um, and it's Andy's idea factory dot blogspot dot com. Um, and then I think it's like the third or fourth post down. That's the sourdough one. I haven't posted to there in a long time because uh, yeah, it's a little hard for me to blog um right now with everything that's going on in our world um so the starter um that's where we're at so if you got your rice flour already that's what we're going to um to use today is um it doesn't have to be bob's red mill it doesn't have to be brown it can be white rice um i just got this from amazon um and i'm psyched because it's organic and um gluten-free, dairy-free, all of that label, GMO-free, got all the good stuff on the back, nut-free, nut kosher-free. So I'm excited to try this. This is, um, I just got this uh, in the mail and it's pure brown rice flour, whole grain, ground up, super fine. I've had people ask me if they can grind some of these. Um, so for instance, if you get sorghum um, or oat flour, or oats rather in the whole form, you just can put them in your coffee grinder or your nut grinder and grind them super small. Um, and uh, if you do have questions, you can put them in the chat. I see a couple of questions um, coming down the pike here. Um, so let's see. The website was Andy's, A-N-D-Y-S, ideafactory.blogspot.com. So if anybody can type fast, they can put that in there. Um, the starter, yes, Jeanette, I would say the starter has to be rice flour. So I wanted to also briefly talk about the, the one for one. So you can buy Bob's Red Mill or uh, King Arthur one for one gluten free. It's going to have all the different types of flours in there and the xanthan gum and salt and all of that stuff. Um, thank you, Zia. One of our fast typers there. Appreciate you, girl. Glad you're here. Um and what you need to, for the starter is the simplest thing you can have, right? So I think um, the oat flour, might, I haven't tried this with the oat flour. I don't think the sorghum or the arrowroot flour would do this. And I have tried this with coconut flour. Um, and that I actually talked about that in the blog post as well, that I started with whole wheat um, and then those two as a starter to just see what those two performed at, you know, in it like comparison with the whole the regular flour starter, because I knew what that looked like. I knew how much it bubbled. Every time I fed it, it kind of fermented and bubbled up even further. And you had to divide and add. And um, every time you did it, it expanded. The coconut flour did not do that. Um, the rice flour did. So I would say start with the rice flour. Um, 
And if your store doesn't have it, just get it off of Amazon. This one, I literally ordered this one on, on Saturday and it got here today. So, um, so that's a little bit about the flowers and fermentation. Um, when you're doing your starter, um, it's super easy. You just take an equal amount of, um, and this is, I believe a quarter cup scoop. It's from my complete bag. Um, because we don't have a full kitchen set up here yet in the yurt. Um, so I just have, uh, like I showed you this morning in the live, I did um, a wide mouth jar. I'm gonna put two of those scoops in. Yes, there we go. So two scoops, you can see that in there. Um, and then I'm gonna pour, I have this cold water. Did a little more research since last I posted. So I'm gonna put two of these into the jar with the rice flour. Um, and I'll talk about cold water in just a sec. And then you just stir it to blend it, mix it, whatever. Stir it really good. I feel like you can kind of see it's like milky. And I can feel on the bottom, feel it all dissolving. I don't want it, I don't really don't want it to settle. So you're gonna stir it this first day there and you want it kind of, it's kind of soupy, but not, it's thick, right? So you'd want it kind of thick. And that was two scoops of water and two scoops of rice flour. It doesn't matter what size your scoop is, so long as it's the same size. So I would do a quarter of a cup or a half a cup of rice flour and a half a cup of water and it's just cold water. And so what's interesting is, in the live that I did this morning, I was like, my mom taught me whenever you're baking to use cold water. So I'm just programmed, use cold water. And I went and looked at um, Google, of course, why? Why do we use cold water? Um, and it's actually better if you're talking about something that's bonding with gluten or yeast, um, because the cold water uh, slows that process um, you know, if you're rising yeast, for instance, which we aren't, and we aren't using gluten. So you don't necessarily need to use the cold water, but I still would because you want the process slow. You don't want to heat this flour. It does have some of those thickening properties in it anyway, right? Because it's rice. So um, yeah, and it's starting to, mine's already starting to thicken up a little bit. Um, so again, um, it doesn't have to be brown rice. It can be white rice flour. It doesn't have to be Bob's Red Mill. Um, it can be this this pure organic kind. It can be um, King Arthur makes a rice flour. I think there are a lot of companies that are making rice flour. Um, and I refrigerated it, Nesco, but I, I you don't necessarily have to. I was just on my live this morning laughing at myself because we literally do not have tap water yet in the yurt, in the yurt. So if you have a tap, you have cold water. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Right. So, and if you're in Arizona, your tap water probably isn't cold. Right. But if you're in steamboat or uh, somewhere in new England, your tap water probably is cold. Um, so I just, I try and use cold and that's something, like I said, that I learned from my mom. She put it in a jar, she put it in the fridge. And then when it was time to use it, she would use it. She even did that with the flour. She would chill the flour too. Um, so you could do that mess around with it. I mean, that's, that's what's fascinating to me about baking is that it's science. And so sometimes, you know, the combinations work, sometimes they don't. And it might be because the water wasn't chilled or the flour wasn't chilled. Right. So, um, so you're going to feed your starter, just looking at the time we're doing good. Um, you're going to feed your starter once again, before you go to bed. So whenever you feed your starter, it's equal parts water, equal parts flour. So another little scoop, like a quarter of a cup, or it could even be a tablespoon. So you don't want to fill this whole jar in the week, right? Um, you can, but you don't want to because you want it to continue to ferment. Um, so, you know, tomorrow I'll add another little scoop and then the next day and then the next day, right? So in four or five days, you're going to fill this jar and you'll see it'll start to bubble. And if it actually does come too, too much up into the jar, just pour some of it out into another jar. And then you've got two starters. Um, you'll only be using about a quarter of a cup of the starter for this recipe on Friday. So um, when it comes time to use it, you don't need that much this time. 
um, but maybe you like it um, and you'll be making multiple recipes with it. So having a lot is okay as well. Um, Sally, did you put the mother in the jar? So this is the mother. I'm literally making the mother from scratch right now. This is the starter. So I, there is no mother. Um, and, um, you, you know, from using this from scratch, the longer that you feed this, they're equal sizes. Um, so it doesn't matter what size you use. I used, um, this little scoop and I did two of them. It's probably this scoop is two or three tablespoons. So it's probably a quarter cup, maybe a little less. Um, but it doesn't matter so long as they're equal. You could do one tablespoon and one tablespoon, quarter cup and one quarter cup. And then when you feed it, you feed it once a day. Um, that's right, Sally, we are making our own. So, um, and trust me, it will work. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't, you don't need to go to Ireland to get the mother. Um, so tonight, yes, put one more scoop in just to feed it before bedtime, leave it on the counter, leave it partially, um, covered. So I like this jar, this jar is one of our old honey jars. Um, but I, I like to use like a ball jar so I can just put the flat ball jar lid on top and leave like a little tiny bit of air so that, um, cause we have, you know, furry noses that get into the counters at night, um, here. And, and I don't mean rodents. I mean, the ones that we choose to feed, um, that we have adopted, you know, so they like to get into everything. So, um, you don't want to put it in the fridge. You don't want it someplace hot either. So someplace cool. Yes. Tonight, one scoop of flour, one scoop of water. Um, and then tomorrow, one scoop of flour, one scoop of water and the next day. That's tomorrow is Tuesday. So Wednesday, a scoop of each Thursday, a scoop of each. And then Friday, um, we'll bake together. Um, so for Friday, you want to make sure that you have um, all of those ingredients that I listed, which are the other flowers. We're meeting at 2 p.m. Eastern, not 4. Uh, the recordings will all be in that same Facebook group um, as well as YouTube. I will put them on YouTube for those who are not on Facebook. Um, and however, if you have questions and you're not in the Facebook group, you'll have to just message me directly um, or put them below the YouTube um, comments. Cause I allow comments on Facebook. I mean, on uh, YouTube. Um, but if you have questions, I would love to see them. I would love to see activity in that Facebook group. I would love to see, you know, your pictures of your, of your, um, of your starter and, um, yeah. So let me see if I've got everything. It is a labor of love. This does take time. So be patient. No need to put it in a dark place, cover it, but not tightly. Yep. Exactly. Um, and it's also dust, you know, I mean, you don't want particles in there. Um, I would not try anything other than rice flour right now. This is, I'm, I'm going to teach you this recipe that I know works. I would practice this recipe and then start tweaking it. Um, because I don't, I don't know what nut flours work. I haven't tried. I tried everything under the sun when I developed this five years ago. Um, I haven't tried everything under the sun in the last year or two. Um, but I would, I, you know, I would start with what works and then tweak that a little bit before I started adding in the nut flowers. Um, you can, like I said, in the beginning, go to that blog post and see the other things that I've tried, see the other recipes that I've listed. Um, Google it yourself too, maybe, um, and see, all right, let me close participants so I can see all the chat here. Um, Yes, Darla, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights, one scoop of flour, one scoop of water. Doesn't matter what time of day. Um, you could you could also feed it twice a day. Um, that's another another faster way to like build your mother. You could feed it twice a day. Um, but I like to let it ferment and, you know, kind of watch it. Um, oh, thank you. So it looks like Zia was filling everybody in for me because she's amazing. Um, take your time, set intentions. What I like to do is pray into this so um, and set good intentions into it. My my version of praying is like mantras and good energy and white light and um, asking my angels, you know, but but not just right for like a good sourdough, right? Setting the intention that this is something that I'm going to eat 
right? So I want to put love and health. And if it's for somebody else, I want to put love and health in there for them. So I always like to include that because we, I think we move through life so quickly, we forget to slow down and set intention and put intention into our food. And and the food always turns out better when we do that, right? Um, so you can set a good intention for a nice fluffy sourdough bread, but um, I would put some more stuff in there too. Your homework is to get those other flowers um, it doesn't matter the brand, um, but we have arrowroot. I don't actually even have them all. So arrowroot and sorghum and oat flour. So I'm waiting on my oat flour and then xanthan gum. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the xanthan gum next week um, or a Friday, I mean, because, or maybe it might even be Monday. I'm not sure when I'll work that in yet, but um, yeah, too, I I do have trepidation around using too much of the gums, right? Because then you're still creating that stickiness that gluten has. Um, but I have not found a recipe without gum. So we'll talk about that too. And if you've got one, please, please, please share that. Um, no, Sally, you cannot use the one-to-one -one because one-to-one -one has all of those flowers in it, plus the xanthan gum. You want to create a starter, a mother, if you will, from a very basic ingredient, it's going to ferment. It's not going to ferment if it's got all those different things in it. It's um, it's got shelf life stuff in it, right? If it's one to one, um, I mean, find me a really, really clean one to one ingredient list that doesn't have multiple gums in it, um, and I'll tell you maybe it'll ferment. But if it's a, if it's built for shelf life, it's probably not going to ferment. Um, all right. I think we're good on, well, not for the mother, but for breaking flour. No, I would, Sally, I would still try. I have tried that also. I would still try, like I said, with the, um, with the nut flours, I would still try this recipe and then maybe try your one-to-one. -one. Um, because I don't, I, I did not get the one-to-one -to, -one to work for this. So, um, more power to you if you can, but I, I could not, um, so I just want to wrap it up with, um, if you don't know about the Live With Vitality Collective, that's our team in our whole food community. And uh, we're on all the socials under Live With Vitality Collective. We post a lot of things every week and uh, every month. And this is day one of our 10 day reset. So if you don't know what the 10 day reset is, reach out to the person and invited you because that is a really fun experience on um, really having a, a healthy look at your your kitchen and your lifestyle. Um, so give us a shout, follow us. And if you wanna share this, please do. I would love to see our very enthusiastic, ho holistic community using a gluten-free sourdough for all of our sourdough parties. So um, please do share, share the love and thank you guys all for coming. Um, and I'm sorry you can't unmute yourselves, but um, yeah, if you have questions, come into the Facebook group. It is being recorded. So it'll be put in that Facebook group. Oh, and let me put that link in here for all of you. There is the Facebook group. So save that. And let me save the chat. So I have that. Uh, where are you? I lost my mouse. It's the weirdest thing. I have no mouse right now. Luckily it's a touch screen. Okay, saved chat. Thanks guys for joining. Uh, so much love to our community. Appreciate you guys for being here and wanting to learn about gluten-free. Oh yeah, look at that. It's already, so you definitely want to mix it a lot. It starts to turn into a little bit of a, a science experiment cement wise, but keep stirring it multiple times a day. Doesn't have to be every hour, but maybe three or four times a day, give it a stir. All right, guys. Thank you.